So if you're late, too bad. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Nick Barset, and I'm Julian Dorzo. So um, the, the former PTL is a new PTL for Sealometer. So uh, today, we are going to do a little introduction to what Sealometer is about. And uh, we decided to title this presentation from uh, meterings to metrics. Um, as we, we decided during the last summit uh, to make a, a little switch. So um, when we started uh, about a year ago, the question that uh, led to the creation of the telemetry project was, hey, what about billing in OpenStack? And of course, it's not the purpose of OpenStack to, to actually provide uh, a, a billing function. But it was really the, 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 the need in OpenStack to have what was needed to do billing. And uh, actually, what about billing was the name of the session we presented six months ago together with Doug Hellman. Um, one, when we uh, decided to start Silometer to solve the first step of the billing uh, issue, metering was our focus. Uh, we really wanted to provide all the information in one single place, collecting all the metrics that you would need in order to produce a bill in the end. But we don't want to do billing, so we would stop at metering. The f right after metering, when you do billing, is a phase called rating, which is transforming a metric into a dollar amount or a currency amount. This is something that is not part of Silometer. Right after that, there is a phase which is sending or generating a bill, sending it, collecting the fund. We don't want to do that in Silometer. And we didn't want to do that, and we still don't want to do it. Yeah. We started the project uh, a year ago. Um, this is the, the list of uh, uh, people yeah. that have, uh, people, companies, that have uh, contributed to Silometer since. Uh, did we forget anyone? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, this didn't change. Uh, we are Dreamos, which is there since day one with Innovance, which is a big contributor to Silometer. We, we both work for Innovance. Yeah, so. <laughs> and uh, at &T worked with us too, and Red Hat, obviously, a lot, and Tial, Dell, and Ubuntu. Like so them. I see a couple contributors. Can you stand up? Yeah, so there's Owen here from Red Hat. Um, I Who guess. else is there? No one else? Ooh. Anybody? Yeah. OK. Hi. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Anybody using Silometer in this room? Nice. Wow, nice. So we'll talk about it, but there is a, a session where we want to see everybody that uses Silometer in. Yeah. Uh, that would be on Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. This is the yeah, second one, the last of the day. Yeah. So we, we have a list of the sessions uh, a little bit later in the presentation. So for Folsom, this is what we uh, had for goal. Not going to read this uh, lengthy sentence, but basically it's uh, saying that we were focusing on metering, which I already said. For Grizzly, we decided to extend. From metering, we went into metrics in general. We decided to extend the scope of Silometer to uh, allow anyone that needed to collect information from OpenStack to have a single place to do it from. So actually, we would do the collecting, yeah. and we would allow the sending of this collected information to multiple destination. That was the result of the Grizzly Summit six months ago. And I think we are quite happy with yeah, we the result yeah. uh, we got. Uh, Julien is going to uh, do a, a quick overview of the architecture in yeah. a few slides, so uh, I'll, I'll leave that to him. So. The great thing is that so far, because the summit has not happened, yeah. <laughs> the objective for Havana have not changed. But please check again at the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> it may have changed at that time. 
So this is globally the workflow. Uh, Celometer uses collect, transform, publish, yeah. store, and read. Julien, do you want to give a little, yeah, little bit more great, detail? The great new stuff in Grizzly is uh, actually transform and publish. We didn't have before. We did only collect, then store and read. So we did this uh, in Grizzly. I'm going to introduce you a bit of how this works and what we can do with this. Uh, we're going to have a more um, deeper session on Wednesday too about mm -hmm. the architecture of Telemetry. So, thanks. So uh, this is mainly our uh, how we do the collection of metrics. Uh, this is uh, accurate to 99 percent. Okay, I simplified some bits, but uh, there's two way to collect data. Uh, the green one and the best one is via the notification bus, which is part of Oslo. You may have heard of it. Uh, it's used by a lot of projects. Um, we also have the API, uh, which is used by the agents uh, in Cilometer to collect data we don't have on the notification bus. Uh, for example, if you are going to uh, meet your glance, you can't know uh, how many images uh, you don't have without asking the API. So you have to call regularly and ask for it. Other metrics are sent uh, when, when you're lucky on the notification bus. So everything is collected by uh, two components in Cilometer, the collector and the agents. And we send all of these metrics to uh, other systems via a pipeline, which I'm going to describe right now. So just uh, before switching slide, yeah. um, of course, the goal of Silometer is to do as little as possible because you are lazy. So if every project could send information on the bus, this is what we would want. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the case. This is why we have to multiply ways we go and fetch data from. Yeah. But if you lead a project in uh, OpenStack or elsewhere, please send your information on the bus. <laughs> yeah, I would like to challenge this for every over a project, but it's a long way. And uh, I just noticed uh, I wrote a new in Grizzly on, uh, on the uh, compute, um, no, storage stuff. We now have uh, posters and meters for Swift in Grizzly. We didn't have in Fulton, so that's a new stuff too. Um, I was a pipeline system. This is something we designed uh, in Grizzly. So the basics is you have a meter, so you get from notification or from the API. And you're going to be able to transform this meter into one another or into um, more meters if you want to. And you're going to publish them or the meter to one or multiple receiver. So each step is going to um, mutate your meters if needed. It's an optional step. And then publish them directly to a receiver, which can be a meter. So the transformer um, is uh, an handy way to change your meters um, into uh, something different. For example, when you have a system uh, like uh, CloudWatch-like uh, system we imaginated, back then uh, you're going to have a meter from Nova, which is a CPU time from instance. So we get this from Nova and from Leverage, actually, uh, as seconds. So it's uh, CPU dot time counters. But the thing is, uh, your system might not be able to treat this data as it is. So uh, maybe it will want a percentage over um, CPU, a core usage. So you're going to be able with a transformer to transform this data, these meters here, into a new one, which is a percentage and not seconds. So this is the goal of a transformer. They are designed in very generic way. They have uh, parameters. So you can use one transformer and give uh, it a set of parameters and make it act uh, like you want for your final publisher. So uh, about publishing, so the final step in the pipeline is to publish the meter, obviously, because you want to use it then. And while well, the default publisher is still the RPC we designed in Folsom, it didn't change a lot in Grizzly, uh, which publish message uh, via AMQP using Oslo RPC uh, standard system to the Cilometer collector. And that you can now hook any other publisher 
We don't have any new publisher uh, in Grizzly. We just have the interface to write new ones. But we know people want absolutely a UDP publisher. So there it is, at least in the diagram. Um, to publish to an external system would can be anything. Uh, I mean, billing, monitoring, uh, capacity planning, whatever you want. So really, the idea here is we have written all this logic to go fetch all kinds of metrics everywhere in OpenStack. It's not complete. I mean, th there can be other. But what we want to do is make sure that we do this work only once. And every time somebody else wants to consume it, rather than rewriting all the logic to go fetch each metric, we offer them a way to plug into the general mechanism whether they want to get this data from uh, the Celometer API or if they want to get it somewhere else using their own publisher. So for example, if you wanted to collect performance metrics, you need a frequency of, about, uh, of sample of about every second, for example. We don't need, when, you do, when we do metering for billing, we don't need uh, data collected every second. It would be a waste of time and space to store all that. However, with the mechanism of having multiple uh, frequencies set, the capacity to choose transformation, and multiple publisher, that is giving us the, uh, the ability to have one mechanism to collect with multiple destinations. Yeah, and you can configure uh, the, time, the time you want um, to, to fetch uh, every meter. So that's quite powerful, actually. So actually, uh, you, you say that there is no other uh, publisher. We, we actually started one, as uh, and you, you did. I did, uh, yeah. For alerting. Oh yeah, but prototype. it's not a different publisher. We actually hooked on the Cinometer RPC publisher. Can you can yeah, but this. you duplicated it so that it would go into a different database. So how yeah. it, it turns yeah. out to be an, another publisher. Yeah. So we, we know it works. That's what I wanted oh, yeah. to get. Yeah, we know. <laughs> We don't talk about things that don't work. <laughs> OK, so the, not the last part, but uh, an important one is uh, the collector. So this part is now optional if you are pu just uh, publishing to another system. But we still have our collector, which is very handy to do things like billing, et cetera. So um, the collector didn't change a lot. We still have our architecture with a, with a storage abstraction layer which uh, I think we are the only one in OpenStack to use because everyone is tied to SQL alch Alchemy. Um, so we have this abstraction layer and we are able to use a lot of different backends. Uh, we still have um, the default, which is MongoDB, which is well tested and works. Uh, we have SQL, which is less tested, and but should work. Uh, not every function is implemented. Uh, uh, yeah, and that's true for HBase too, yeah. And it misses, uh, the meta queries uh, in the API. So you, you will miss some, uh, some features. And same for HBase, which means the same, which misses the same feature uh, as in SQL, as HBase is new and Grizzly. We didn't have it in a- uh, So in the base work is there. If you want to use something else in MongoDB, you're welcome to do so, but be ready to contribute code yeah. to, to complete some functions, some uh, analytical function in the API are not uh, implemented in the SQL yeah. and may not be implemented in HBase, I don't know. No, um, no, the same uh, feature are missing. We found, uh, at the end of the cycle, we found a, a humongous bug in the yeah. SQL uh, database that showed that it seemed that nobody <coughs> else had used it. Uh, Naturally, at least. Um, the, the somebody had defined the, 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 the counter size as being an int <laughs> instead of a big int in uh, MySQL. You yeah. can imagine what happened with a network counter. Yeah. Uh, that was ugly. Uh, anyway, um, so very well tested. You don't want to think about it. Use Mongo. Uh, you want to work with us on it. Y feel free to use any of the other, yeah. other two or write another one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, last part is the API. So once you store the, a lot of meters, you want to write them back. And uh, we use the same storage abstraction layer, so you will be able to use um, obviously the same um, database backend. Uh, we did a lot of change uh, in Grizzly. Uh, we built a new API version, so we now have version two of the API. Uh, so when we built the version one of the API, we had only one view, which was billing, and we didn't really know where we were going. 
Uh, no, we have a better view, so we simplified a lot the API. Uh, we cut a lot of uh, useless path and things like that in the requests. So it's, it's very simple. We know also merge uh, statistics retrieval in only one call because it's well less costly to do this. Uh, we have no advanced filtering mechanism, uh, which are the kind of mechanism you won't have in SQL backends and HBase but works fine in uh, MongoDB for uh, meta data fields. And uh, you can also, this is something new uh, I wrote uh, a few weeks back, you can do statistics by periods. So you are able to select a range and divide stati statistics by hour, day, uh, whatever you want. So this is uh, going to, I think, evolve a lot in Havana too because we still have a lot of ID and we didn't have time in Grizzly to write everything. So if you already use uh, Silometer and built an application that uses the V1 API, don't be worried. We are going to continue and maintaining the V1 API for at least three more releases. Yeah. Okay. We are not going to switch like this API on every release. No, and I think we, we missed something in version two. Uh, the, the point is most people use version one and a bit of version two so far. But we'd like to be able to deprecate version one. There's a lot of call. Uh, we have in version one, we don't have in version two because we are not sure they are needed. So, well, if you're trying to port something from version one to version two, well, don't hesitate to raise your hand and say, hey, I missed something because we don't know uh, everything that people used in version one. Maybe it's still, I don't know, useful. Actually, uh, Francois Charlier, uh, I don't know if Francois is still here. Where are you? And I are leading a session uh, on Thursday. Uh, yeah. We have a schedule at the end, uh, talking about uh, API improvements that we would like to see. So uh, this is the global architecture. So uh, everything I, I just said is here. So you got the agent and the collector uh, fetching the metrics from the API of the notification bus on top and publishing the, their pipeline to an external system or to the collector and storing and reading back with the API from any of your system. Any questions before we go away from the nice diagram that Julien did? It's AMQP. Yeah, that's, we use Oslo RPC, uh, which is based on AMQP, Oslo RPC. It's the same system Nova use, or every or Quantum use, et cetera. So it's safe. Um, so by default, it's RabbitMQ. But since it's using uh, the Oslo RPC mechanism, uh, I think three backends are supported right now. Cupid, yeah. uh, Rabbit, and sh Zero MQ should be supported, but I don't think anyone tested it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Owen tested uh, Cupid. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, so that's working. And it works. Uh, Rabbit is what a lot of people use, so that's working as well. Zero MQ, if you are using it, please let us know. We will mark it as being tested. <laughs> <laughs> Does that answer your question? So you could write a publisher using RC slug, but we are not using RC slug. Yeah, at all. but you could, if you prefer. So there is a couple mechanism that we have already uh, in there. Uh, first, the, the, when you use uh, an IMQP queue, the message delivery is pretty much guaranteed. Uh, second, we are signing. It's uh, a simple signing message, uh, a sim simple uh, message signing mechanism that we are using currently. But already, it's already guaranteed in some way that messages cannot be faked too easily. 
And third, we are uh, uh, planning on numbering messages yeah. so that you cannot have uh, insertion uh, or deletion without, uh, or loss without knowledge. Um, there is a session uh, led by Sandy Walsh uh, on uh, having a double entry mechanism. So maybe using two publishers yeah. to verify in two ways that you're not missing information. And that would uh, provide an extra guarantee uh, about no, non lo not losing your information. Uh, who was first? I don't know. You were. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what is the rationale uh, when you go for a scale environment, let's say I'm collecting 20 meters from one system, and yeah. I'll go with uh, 20 portions? Yeah, you want to discuss this with them. <laughs> this is uh, uh, something we are going to discuss uh, on Thursday, too, yeah. Because we don't know, uh, we all have a different idea how to solve this, and I honestly don't have the answer. I think the point is not the UDP. So uh, you, you, you're talking about UDP because when you're doing um, uh, some kind of things like metering for billing, you absolutely don't want to lose. So you will use a, a message sending mechanism that is not lossy. However, when you're doing performance statistics, you don't care losing yeah. one or two items in the thing, and you want to transmit as much as you can using as much of the bandwidth that you have. So yeah. that's why we. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, you you can couple two uh, things in a row, so you can fetch the same measures and send them more regularly to a performance statistics system and stuff. So. Uh, for message uh, messenger events and transfers, is there any notion of tables for the? Uh, no. Interest during this period. No. For now, what we do is that we. Uh, monitor things via the audit system built in Nova, Quantum, etc. So we have kind of uh, orbits of system. We don't want to trust um, Nova saying I've started an instance and I've stopped it because we might lose some notification or things. So we rely on orbits for now. We plan to add more, uh, I think, in Havana to have more information like when it really started, when it really stopped. But we we use orbits. It's more safe for us. Uh, yeah, I wasn't talking about uh, two messages, one is start and one is stop, but you know, a single notification. And no, we, we, we don't have. We had, consume. we had, but we, we, it was always, um, we don't have this in notification. There's no duration in what we get. Uh, when we do an API call, call, for example, we don't have anything. So we had this in the first version. And it was always said to none, so we dropped it. However, there's uh, three types of uh, meters. Yeah, of controls, yeah. Of, uh, uh, you have um, a gauge or delta or things like that to know what kind of value you're going to get. But it's not. But it, it, it won't solve your interval. In, in fact, yeah, we, we couldn't find any use for it. Yeah. Uh, sorry. There is a session right after this one yeah. at 5.20. Uh, it's in the unconference. I don't know in what room. Uh, A104, uh, just there. So please join us for the discussion uh, if you want yeah. to know more about that, because we don't know yet. <laughs> Can you repeat some of these questions? I can't hear in the back. Oh, OK, sorry about that. Uh, the, question, the last question was, uh, what about silometer and health and mom? And the answer is, come join us. <laughs> You had a question, was it answered in the middle? Yeah, I guess so, you're looking at your phone. <laughs> Somebody in the back. <laughs> we would love for that to happen, yes. Uh, they can, there is uh, quite a, a good documentation on how to add additional meters. Uh, at the moment, we've uh, extended for specific customer, Silometer to uh, 
grab additional information. We know it's easy to do. Yeah. Uh, Julien has done that many times. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, if you are working for Nisera, Midokura, Big Switch, or anyone else, and once you add meter, come see us. We are very open. Oh, yes. Your physical approaches to, uh, you know, your, your actual approaches are even spent on the image. So how are you doing that out? Like how, how, how are people doing that? We don't have a slide detailing the metadata, right? I uh, know. Yeah, we are. We are. Uh, okay, so the question is how we received uh, these uh, tickets, this uh, event saying this has been consumed. Uh, how do we tie it back to a tenant or a project ID and a user ID? And the answer is, in each one of the message, we have a, a payload which contains lots of information. Um, uh, one of this information is the tenant ID, the user ID, and everything else that we can grab from the metadata. For example, in Nova, it's all of the instance metadata that is carried. So you know uh, what type of instance, how much, well, all, all the data you got in the- Favor and things like that. So uh, the question is, do we have a mechanism to handle the transaction for the billing system? And the answer is, we've got an API, which is a REST API, which people can use to build transaction on top, but the, the REST API, by definition, is non-transactional. Yeah. We don't handle anything with which would be a, a billing specifics or business logic or something like that, pretty much. So uh, um, we're going to move on a few more slides before we accept additional questions because it would be stupid that we cannot finish a presentation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quick anyway. Okay, roadmap. So Grizzly, this is all we wanted to do. Everything that with a check mark is stuff that has been done. So as you can see, we do less than what we wanted, but we did quite a bit. I mean, yeah. we become incubated, and we even graduated from incubation during that cycle. Uh, we uh, implemented Swift. <coughs> we implemented uh, the SQL Alchemy storage driver, uh, even HBase, which was not planned at that, uh, yeah. when, when we started uh, yeah. the cycle. Yeah, uh, this is what we presented uh, in Grizzly uh, six months ago. This is the exact list of what we watched, so we are, we are good. The API, the user accessible API, that's quite nice if you want to uh, have a plugin in Horizon to displaying user information. Um, multi dimension, that's actually fairly nice. That's the, the filter notion you, you, yeah. you, you mentioned. And that's uh, another great contribution from uh, Owen, correct? That was you or was it Angus? Angus, 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 Angus sorry. Angus. The other re uh, Red Hat guy. You know, they, they wear their hat all the time, so <laughs> we can't distinguish them. <laughs> well, one is based in the UK and the other one in Australia, but that's a very small difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, Havana. This is currently what we're going to be discussing this week, right? Yeah, mainly, yeah. And I'm sure this list will be modified as we discuss. That's the point. I mean, if we meet all together to uh, do designs is to uh, sort out our ideas and we g generally come yeah. up with new ones. That this is a, these are the hot topics of this week, uh, especially alarming and working with it. Uh, we have like a third of our session about alarming, I guess, and uh, we have a few about uh, API and uh, uh, integrating with Nova too, which would be a way to drop the agents and the APR call we do, uh, etc. So if you follow the heat project, which uh, incubated and in got integrated about exactly at the same time as Silometer. Uh, currently, inside of Heat, there is a, a function to do uh, alarming or alerting uh, when certain thresholds are reached. 
then th you need to take actions. This is something that in due time, we want to be able to uh, do in a more generic fashion and externalize out of it and integrate into Silometer. But to do it well means to do it uh, slowly with the proper design. This is going to be, I think, the, the, the most uh, interesting session of this summit, uh, yeah. from my point of view at least. Should we move on? Oh, by the way, for I, we don't know yet what we're yeah. going to be doing. We're going to do something. Bring your ideas. So that's what I just mentioned. Uh, oh, we so we are going to uh, to try to provide a, a, a very generic way of doing alarming inside of OpenStack, which should allow Heat to drop their more specific implementation uh, to use uh, what will be in Silometer. Okay, so. Oh, it's, uh, the idea is to have something much better than CloudWatch. <laughs> a little ambitious here, but. What would be auto scaling? <coughs> that uh, it, it's tight, but uh, we'll, we won't do auto scaling. That's its jobs, but we'll be in between. But the, 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 the thing is, how do you know? The thing is busy. Being busy is a very complex definition. Generally, you need to aggregate multiple uh, meters to decide whether you're busy or you're just having a high load. If you were basing everything on the, your load metric, uh, you would do uh, auto scaling for no reason. Maybe you need to combine that with CPU usage and maybe some network metric and number of processes. I don't know. Whatever you think is valid for your application. Then you're going to have, when this set of threshold is reached, then you need to uh, action something. Something can be heat auto-scaling mechanism. Another thing could be, let's cut the connection so that the user don't uh, bother my application anymore. That's for you to decide what's going to happen there. Okay, and Silometer is going to try to uh, meter information, detect threshold being uh, reached, or getting back to normal, and send events to processing engines, which could be eat, but which could be whatever you want. Basically, uh, we are in the very early stage of defining an API where you're going to be calling back, well, Silometer uh, yeah. is going to be calling back a specific URL with a set of parameter telling it, this is what's, what is happening. So when you set an alarm, you set where you do the callback. For heat, for example. That's, heat will be our first consumer, but you could have all kinds of consumer for alarming. So, for example, I suggest this guy already used up all of his, I guess, all the quota that we want to tell this that uh, this guy cannot access more hardware. Yeah. So, we, uh, Shmuel, who works for Innovance as well, implemented quotas in Swift. So you, don't, you won't need alarming in order to do that. Just use the middleware that he wrote. Yeah, but you could. So this is a, a list of uh, use cases that we think could be valid uh, to use Silometer uh, as it is today. So uh, of course, uh, rating, billing, uh, uh, engines would be a proper uh, consumer of Silometer. Um, all kinds of analytics, whether it's uh, capacity planning or adaptive, adaptive uh, scheduling algorithm. We've got a session with Nova uh, where yeah. we <coughs> are evaluating uh, whether it would be a good idea or not, we don't know yet, uh, to replace uh, the scheduler uh, information gathering with Silometer. That could be a cool, way, a cool thing to do. Um, there is all kinds of simulation, uh, pre-prod, visualization, monitoring. 
uh, use cases that could be uh, used and put in place uh, with Silometer. Um, I think you, 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 you've worked on a, 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 cool, a few cool use cases, haven't you? About? Uh, usage of Silometer for uh, something else than billing. Um, no, I just did uh, uh, some interface back then to show um, some uh, graphing of uh, what you get into Silometer. We have this in, in Silometer actually in the version one API. We have some, some, some sort of a debug interface uh, in HTML where you can see um, the data you get with a, a simple graph. So you can do well anything you would like with uh, this uh, data. Okay, this is the section where we advertise the future session. If you think this session was cool, these sessions are going to be even cooler, but they are going to be part of the design summit. So they are going to be discussions, not presentation by a couple guy on the stage. They're going to be discussion between people that want to contribute. Um, so if you want to contribute to this discussion and to Silometer, here are uh, the time and the place he is always the room B116, uh, uh, that's in the design summit section uh, in the middle over there. Yeah. A few links uh, if you want to know more. And uh, how much time do you have left? Do you, do you know when it's where we're supposed to end at 3.20? So, so yeah. we've got four minutes for questions, for additional questions. Not yet. Uh, we have a blueprint about this, but nobody volunteered to do it. But we are not against the idea. We, 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 we can't get, um, I didn't talk about this because there's a lot of things in Telemetry, but we have um, a source field in our meters which indicates from which system the meters come. So by default it's OpenStack, but you can hook and send any meters from any system being a physical the uh, load balancer or physical host or anything you'd like. So you can extend. Yeah. Yeah. You mean scalability about the collector? Um, okay, so uh, all the meters are sent on the wire for now. Uh, you can have any uh, number of collector uh, running and storing neuters into the system. There's a wrong robin uh, load balancing on the collector side. So you can do this uh, with the agents. Um, for example, the example I said about uh, images, you want to port the API. This is not uh, scalable at all. So yeah, you've got, we've got one per uh, Nova um, compute node. Uh, so for the agents of uh, Nova, yes, this is uh, scalable because you run one agent on each Nova compute host. But for the agent central, which oh, is the doing one that does polling, yeah, it. glance polling, for example, this is not scalable. This is why we'd like to, to drop it uh, because it's you can run uh, if you run two, uh, two, three, or four agents polling the API, we're going to have four more times uh, meters. So you don't want to do that. So basically, you need one per. API endpoint and no yeah. more because if you have two, you'll collect the data twice. So yeah, it's a little that bottle. can be a problem if you don't want to store a lot of meters. So in terms of high availability, it's e easy to make it highly available. You just need to have a, a simple watch uh, and restart it somewhere else. But y just make sure you don't yeah. collect it twice. It's uh, it won't do any harm, but it's just a lot of data. Collect unavailability. So it's something you that you can derive with the data we collect already. Yeah, you have to build this yourself. But it will depend on what you mean by availability. If if availability is uh, availability of the infrastructure or of the instance or of a service on top of the instance, the notion is a little different. And we may or may not have the correct metrics. Any other questions? 
Yes. Did you get that? No, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get what you what you meant with the. Uh, uh, you have yeah. Maybe a higher priority subject and perhaps the metric is more important than other metrics. And so it's a metric of scheduling algorithms that are available to the client. Uh, actually, the, the multiple publisher will be for multiple users. We. We don't plan to have multiple publishers for the same use unless you want to do double entry validation. Yeah. I guess the question is if one message has higher priority than any other, for example, this message is about billing, the other message is about, let's say, something related, should the billing information of a message get in the first uh, higher priority yeah. than the other one? It's an AMQP problem, not really a centimeter one, I guess. Uh, it depends how you configure your queue um, or you configure your bus. It's not really tied to centimeter. Uh, we just use Oslo RPC to avoid a lot of problems and a lot of thinking about this. So it's, we know it's safe and it works in a way with different backends. So you just have to configure your backends uh, as you want to for metering and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, we could. I don't think we have that yeah. for now. So the the question I'm going to repeat yeah, is: okay. uh, Are we going to publish any recommendation on how to configure RabbitMQ to guarantee the delivery of messages? Uh, yes, we we would. We don't have this uh, right under uh, our end, but uh, if we have uh, this information, I we could add this to the documentation. Or that's no problem. <coughs> Uh, also in Grizzly, uh, you should notice that for RabbitMQ, uh, there was uh, some improvement on high availability of uh, RabbitMQ, where you can now use what is available uh, natively in Rabbit uh, 3.0 and higher. Same, yeah. the exact same place where this session was uh, posted on. That's you good. go under the yellow tab, Design Summit, and there is a Silometer section. Uh, there is a section for each component of OpenStack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Quick question on the metadata that gets sent. Is this every uh, view or flagship? Um, in that metadata, metadata there is some length sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we store all the metadata as we get them, so. If it's blank, it means that it's blank in where we got yeah. it from. <laughs> I have no idea, I didn't check. As much as R the RPC mechanism in uh, Oslo does. Yeah, <laughs> we, use, we use Oslo <laughs> just to avoid this kind of question, so probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think that's it, and yeah. we are done on time. Time's up. Yeah. Thank you very much.